So in this reaction, we have calcium oxide, and it's reacting with this phosphoric acid here. Let's count the atoms up on both sides of the equation. I have one calcium. I have the one oxygen right here. And let's leave our PO4, our phosphate ion, for later. I have three hydrogens, and then I have one phosphate ion, this PO4 here. By leaving that to later, it's going to make things a lot easier. Because if I have one here, and then I have the two phosphates here, let's put a two down there, that means I don't have to mess about with all these oxygens. On the product side, I have three calciums, one oxygen, and two hydrogens. When I have water in a chemical equation, I like to leave that last balancing those hydrogens and oxygens. So let's do the calcium first. I'll put a three in front of the CaO, so the one times the three, that'll give me three calcium atoms. Those are balanced, and then the one times the three, that gives me three oxygen atoms. Why don't we fix the oxygens? We could just put a three in front of the water. Now one times three, that gives us the three oxygens. And then two times three, that means we have six hydrogens. Let's just do the hydrogen. We put a two in front of the H3PO4, three times two, that gives us six. Those are fixed. And this two, it applies to everything. So I have two of these PO4s, two of these phosphate ions right here. So one of these times the two, that gives us two. And now this equation is balanced. So by counting the phosphate ion as one thing, that's made it quite a bit easier for us to balance this equation. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for calcium oxide plus phosphoric acid. And thanks for watching.